Hello everyone. Today we'll be going over an in-depth strategic analysis on a company called Daycare Millions. My name is Russell Donald. I'm Justin Bober. I'm Eric Price. James Renfret. And I'm Nicole Fulton Lincoln. Our agenda for today, we will go over the history and overview, external analysis, internal analysis, possibilities and recommendations, and the conclusion at the end of our report. Agenda for the history and overview is as follows. History, mission, vision, and goals, organizational structure, industry, products, and offerings, services rather, and summary of findings section. So here we have a timeline of some of HR's key milestones, starting with the idea in 1998. They harvested their first wine graves in 2001. After hiring their full-time wine master and general manager, they opened their storefront in 2013, located in Carmel. The mission, vision, and goals of Daytierra. Their primary focus is the best representation of the land as their philosophy. They focus on a no-compromise aspect to their wine. They are unique and high quality and have an inviting atmosphere in their tasting room. They practice sustainable land management whenever they can, with two of their four vineyards being 100% solar power operated. So here we have uh, the organizational structure of Daytierra. It started with uh, Thomas and Carol, the two founders of Daytierra Vineyards. Uh, with Zach Lawrence and Anna Russell. They have seven full-time employees um, in the retail location, each that are cross-trained to take over other positions if necessary. So there's a lot of competition within the California wine industry. Typically, the target market age range is 31 and older. Here we have a graph that shows the wine consumption per capita in the United States from 2000 to 2013, and it shows a 40% increase over that time. Uh, this long-standing trend in growth in the industry is very promising for Daytier. So Daytier was able to earn their Sustainability and Practice Award, and this allows them to make real claims about being a sustainable business. This is also a point of differentiation for them, as not all of their competitors have the same certification. Currently, they have 12 selections of wines, which includes the White Zinfandel, the Pinot Noir, and their Syrah, which recently entered into Whole Foods. Typically, these wines are priced between $26 and $52, and they're distributed from their vineyards to their tasting room, as well as to their 250-member wine club. One of the main issues that they do face, though, is that the market is very saturated with a lot of competitors. So reviewing the history and overview of Daytera has uncovered several initial strengths and weaknesses within the company, as well as opportunities and threats in the environment. So a notable strength that we found was Daytera's dedication to sustainability as proven by their SIP certification mentioned earlier, and this is also a point of differentiation for them. And then a significant threat that they face is the established wineries in, in the local area, as there are a lot of wineries in the Carmel area that have established a loyal customer base, as well as brand awareness that Daytiera has yet to obtain. Next we'll be going over an analysis of the external environment, starting with the general environment and its driving forces, followed by the external stakeholders, then we'll go into the competitive environment, which includes the key success factors, a strategic analysis, a supply chain, a five forces analysis, followed by a summary of findings. So to begin our general environment, we created a pestle analysis, which analyzes the different, different political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal factors that affect Daytiera. So politically, what we found was that Daytiera had to meet different city requirements that allow them to distribute alcohol from the retail locations. So they had to go before the local planning committee to do this. Economically, there is an increasing demand for wine. In 2014, there was around a 10% growth in the industry. And for 2015, it's projected between 14 and 18% growth. This is partially due to the social stigma that wine is considered more of a sophisticated beverage and it's being purchased across all age groups in higher quantities, specifically in the $20 and above range, which Daytierra falls into. Technology is also a specific or a significant factor, uh, specifically social media, because this is what Daytierra uses to connect with its customers and its potential customers. Uh, environment is also a very significant factor because Daytierra is an agricultural business and it relies on environmental conditions in many ways. And legal factors are also very significant because it sells alcohol, it sells wine. So there's a lot of uh, regulations that it needs to follow, uh, most notably the alcoholic beverage control. So these are the external stakeholders of Daytierra. On the left are the customers with the highest stake, and on the right are the investors with the next highest stake. The, they're filled in by their suppliers. Ascona is the specialty grape harvesting company that they use. 
uh, their glass company, and the Cooperage, which is a barrel provider. So Dave Terrier's competition includes several direct and indirect competitors, as well as possible substitutes. So direct competitors are essentially any winery or tasting room in the Monterey area, as they provide a very similar service to Dave Terrier's, their wineries. And we found Pisano Winery, as well as Windy Oaks, to be the most relevant competitors due to their similar size and style. And indirect competitors, they include all the local bars and breweries as they offer a similar customer experience with alcoholic beverages to relax and socialize, but not necessarily wine. Um, and then finally, substitutes include any alternative available to the consumer. And then beer and spirits are currently the most popular. So high customer satisfaction, winemaking quality, and resource utilization are all significant key success factors for Day Tierra. They well suitably on their SIP certification, they balance farm work and use excess juice to later make into wine. So they're fully utilizing their resources and more notably in uh, making high quality wine, giving the, their cuts. So they're giving to the customers what they refer to as the best representation of the land. And for the strategic group analysis, we decided to compare Day Tierra with the two direct competitors of Windy Oaks and Pasano Winery and we compare the two common factors that they have of their wines, of the prices and scores. Wines are scored on a scale from one through 100, closer to 100 being perfect, high quality wine. Right now, DTR currently stands at an average score of 89 compared to its competitors, which are just above 90. So here we have DTR's supply chain. Uh, it involves nine steps, beginning with grape production and finishing with consumption of the product. Uh, one thing that's really important to know about the wine supply chain is that each step has a very significant impact on the final quality of the product. Uh, knowing this, Daytierra has positioned themselves within their supply chain to have a significant involvement in all of these steps to ensure the highest consistency and quality for their final product. For our Porter's Five Forces analysis, threat of new entrants and bargaining power suppliers are ranked as medium. There is a large amount of startup cost associated with the winery, greater than other startup businesses. For this reason, it takes quite a lot of time to get a business up and running, in addition to the three-year wait before your first vintage is ready. The remaining three items are ranked as high as smaller wineries rely on a subscription-based service in order to ensure a constant revenue stream. If a customer has a bad experience with the wine, they could cancel their wine membership, and that is a long-term blow to ATR's revenue. So analyzing the external environment has uncovered additional opportunities and threats for Daytierra. The first and most significant is the opportunity of the, the general environment's tr growing trend of sustainability. Uh, consumers are more concerned and aware of the, what's going into their final product. This is also important because Daytierra is in a great position to take advantage of this opportunity. And finally, a threat that we found most significant was the competitive rivalry in the industry. As Daytierra has already witnessed a competitor or two imitating some of their ideas. Next, we'll move on to the internal analysis. We will start off with resources and capabilities and, and day tiers value-adding activities. We will go on to performance measures and strategies, and then we will finish off with our summary of findings. This is a list of the most extraordinary resources featured by day Tierra. Blend Properties is the physical component of the wine. This is controlled by wine master Zach Lawrence, who serves as the primary hub of intellectual property in the company. Day Tierra's corporate strategy and culture allows them to hire the most capable employees for the job, explaining why their wine is some of the best in the region. So next we'll be going over some of Day Chair's capabilities. So we have listed some additional extraordinary resources. And the important part here is how Day Chair utilizes these resources to add value to the customer. So for an example here, we have the batting machinery is the extraordinary resource. How they utilize this machinery is the capability. And the value added in the end is better efficiency and quality product. Once again, another example is the wine master, Zach Lawrence. He's an extraordinary resource for Daytierra. Creating the blends is this capability, and then in the end, the unique flavorful wine is the value added. So for Daytierra's primary value-adding value activities, we wanted to focus more on the marketing and sales aspects of it. This is coming through their brand building events. Right now, they make no profit from these, so they're strictly used as PR events in, in order to obtain new potential customers. However, it's very important for them to maintain their existing customer base as losing market share would uh, be detrimental to the business. 
The way that they can do this is by continuing to offer high quality service, by continuing to utilize their knowledgeable staff that is cross-trained in order to offer possibly unique pairings of wines, as well as product information to uh, inform the customers. Some of Daytier's most significant support value-adding activities include procurement due to its strong supplier relationships and connections. It includes human resource management due to its cross-trained staff and very capable staff, and its firm infrastructure for its uh, strong management and operations. So here we can see how Daytier performs financially. Uh, all wineries have a high startup cost, uh, like to buy the machinery, as, like the vetting machine to make the wine, as stated earlier. So showing here in their moderately high debt ratio. However, um, as each year has just started and they need to buy more barrels, it shows a less than net income. However, this last year, they have actually oversold their product and showing that in the increase um, of sales here. And this is projected, this shows that uh, Daytira is continuing to grow and projected for an uh, increase of sales as they continue to grow. And also to for using any of that net income to excess net income to pay off their sub costs, which is their number one fiscal objective. As Nicole mentioned earlier, Day Tierra is inhibited by a startup cost associated with most wineries. For this reason, operational leverage is ranked as low. Operational leverage is a measurement of how many options Day Tierra has at a given time. The sunk cost therefore inhibiting. Event attendance is ranked as medium. Day Tierra has a significant following amongst its events, although it is not on a substantial scale. The remaining two items, total juice yield and employee performance, are ranked high, as Daytierra's corporate strategy and culture allows them to hire the best employees that they have for the job. So Daytierra is still a growing company, and therefore it does wish to further increase its market share. To do this, Daytierra uses the business level strategy of focus differentiation, uh, which just means providing a unique product to a narrow market. Uh, Daytierra does this by providing a unique or a, a high quality wine product to a, um, into, or an educated customer base. Because Daytierra is such a small business, they do have trouble aligning each one of the value adding activities with their overall strategy. An example would be with their logistics. As we stated, they have oversold their product in the past, which has the potential to push out order dates for their distribution across the states. Their marketing and sales can improve with more attendance at each event, but their operations and sales are top notch, and this is very important as there is a lot of competition in the area, and they need a way to encourage customers to return to Daytona and be repeat customers. So the internal analysis has uncovered additional strengths and weaknesses within Daytona. A notable strength we found here was their quality product, as it is a priority within the company's mission and vision to create unique flavorful wine and a weakness that put uh, the sunk costs mentioned earlier by Nicole presents a notable weakness as it has proven hard to overcome. So now putting that all together we will go to the next section of the report of possibilities and recommendations for Daytira starting with the corporate strategy followed by the business level strategy then with the strategic competitive advantage then operational efficiency and we'll conclude with our conclusion. So for Daytier's corporate strategy, we came up with two possibilities, the first being to keep their current strategy, and the second being to change it. Currently, we feel like they're in a concentration through growth strategy, and the way that we feel they can enhance this strategy is by marking up ticket prices at their events, or entering into a hotel base in the area. By marking ticket prices up, uh, they would be able to create an extra source of revenue that they could then put toward paying off that sunk cost. And by entering into a, a hotel base, it would further merge the hospitality industry with the wine industry as Ms. Russell sees to do. For changing their strategy, they could switch to a stability strategy, which would make the company more predictable and easier to forecast for their two-year bottling period. Or they could switch to a diversification strategy, which would allow them to introduce new products such as a juice, juice that utilizes the fruit that they already have on their land or introduce other new merchandise. Recommendation for corporate level strategy is to continue with the current strategy of concentration. This allows Daytierra to keep its most dedicated customers and to continue serving them in the best way possible. Dedicated customer relationships are the key to Daytierra's vision, and we believe that it is best that Daytierra continues with the strategy. So when addressing the business level strategy, Daytierra again has two possibilities. First possibility is to continue with 
their focus differentiation strategy by focusing on a narrow scope of operations and relying on their unique product to gain a competitive advantage. The second possibility would be to change their corporate strategy and in doing so, they'd either shift their competitive advantage from a unique product to a cost leadership position, or they could broaden their market and target a wider target market. It is recommended that Daytier maintain its current business level strategy of focus differentiation to further increase its market share. Uh, this growth can best be measured and achieved through its wine club program. So Daytier wants to increase the quality and size of its wine club program to um, increase its loyal customer following. Possible, uh, possibilities for strategic competitive advantage. Possibility one is expanding Daytier's product portfolio. Alternative A is introducing a product called Eau de Vie. It is Latin for water of life, a clear fruit brandy distilled from fruit. Um, alternative B is a Pinot Noir brandy at the recommendation of Dave Tierra's wine master, Zach Lawrence. Both of these products are hard alcohol, so they will require additional ABC, alcoholic beverage control licensing, as well as additional equipment. These, the, both of these items will have a startup cost. Possibility two is a lower cost storage for their wine. Alternative A being using American oak barrels, while alternative B is British oak barrels repurposed from a Scotch whiskey distillery. At this time, it is recommended for the strategic competitive advantage of possibility to lower cost storage with alternative A. Uh, due to having their high sunk cost right now, it is not recommended to put more spending into that. However, uh, if they switch to American oak barrels, we see here that currently what they spent on French oak barrels, they would save more than they are spending and that money could be used to for other aspects in the company. So to improve its operational efficiency, DTR has two possibilities. Possibility one would be to enhance its current organizational structure or just to make adjustments to the staff. Alternative A would be to maintain what it's doing right now, continue with its current organizational staff and make no new changes. Alternative B would be to hire an assistant manager with the goal of relieving some stress from the current general manager. And alternative C would be to hire an intern, which provides a cheap alternative to having an employee on the payroll. And for possibility two, we have a facilitated sunk cost management plan. Alternative A would be to maintain its current pace of making the sunk cost payments. And alternative B would be to increase the sunk cost payments either by frequency or by size with the goal of getting rid of the sunk cost at an earlier time. So at this time it's recommended for the first possibility to utilize alternative C, hiring an intern. Like Russ had said, it's a cheaper alternative to having a full-time staff employee, and it would allow Ms. Russell, the general manager, to dedicate her time to more important aspects of her business. And for possibility two, it's recommended that they utilize alternative A, maintaining their current pace of sunk cost payments. This is because, although it is their number one fiscal objective to pay this off, as the company continues to grow, they can't allocate each dollar of profit towards paying that off, they need to put it towards parts of the business that need improvement in order to keep growing so they avoid plateauing. With the proposed recommendations implemented, operational leverage will rise from low to high. This is due to the transition from French to American oak barrels that will allow Daytierra to benefit from some cost savings. This will allow Daytierra to focus additional monies into other aspects of their business. By continuing the current corporate level and business level strategies, Daytira's event attendance will gradually rise from medium to high as Daytira builds its profitable customer relations. The remaining two items are also ranked as high with continuing the current level strategies. With all these recommendations implemented, we see for Daytira to continue focusing on its current brand base and with that increased event attendance, more people will be talking about Daytira. With better brand awareness, more wine enthusiasts will be able to hear of ATR's brand, uh, eventually causing more of more of their wines to be scored, and this will eventually lead from ATR ranging from 89 to going just above the 90 to meet with its competitors for their competitive advantage. That concludes the strategic analysis of Daytierra Vineyards. On behalf of our team, I'd like to thank Ms. Anna Russell from Daytierra for her time and cooperation. I'd like to thank our professor, Mr. Young, for his support all semester, and you all for attending this morning. We'd like to now open the floor for any questions.
um, you know, because it's such a high-end brand. Is <laughs> So the, so the question is, will changing from French to American oak impact the flavor? The short answer is yes, there will be some flavor changes. The reason why most wineries decide to go with French oak is because it's classified by forest, which allows each winery to pick certain oak from a certain forest in France if they want a specific flavor. This is why most wineries tend to sought out that, that coveted French oak. American oak, in contrast, is not categorized by forest. But that doesn't mean that you could start doing something similar and get a research team out there to find certain flavors in the American oak. Um, the general stereotype for French versus American oak is that, is that French oak is a bit more spicy and a little bit more uh, subtle, whereas American oak is kind of bold, a little bit more oaky. Um, there will be some flavor changes, but a lot of this can be comp a lot of the negative uh, possibilities could be compensated for with expert blending at the hands of Zach Lawrence, the current wine master. Okay, you learned a lot about wine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious that you guys suggested they hire an intern instead of a junior level manager, which I'm sure one of the five. <laughs> <laughs> so small they do only have seven full-time staff employees and it would be difficult to just add on another employee just because it sounds like a good idea so in the future it would also present the opportunity as the company does begin to grow more and they do need to hire additional staff someone who's already been intertwined with the company and has knowledge of the business some additional information on that too is Dayterra's average hiring process takes anywhere from six months to a little over one year that's because of the intense amount of knowledge that you need to become fully integrated in the business. We believe that hiring an intern would be the best way to get some of the busy work off the hands of the general manager. Brad. So you mentioned this is a crowded market, and, and I'm always amazed when I go into a, a good-sized wine store and there's just this immense mass of wine there. That's why I go for the scotch. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and you also mentioned that their wines are unique. Are they, what is it about them, if anything, that makes them unique in the marketplace, that distinguishes them from everybody else? Uh, one of the most important characteristics of Daytira is their SIP certification, and they're the only winery with that SIP, which is sustainability and practice. So that, as mentioned earlier, is that they're fully balancing farm work, and they're using all of the excess reduce and making that into wine as well. So fully um, utilizing all their resources. In Monterey County. And we don't know about wineries that are that could be on the opposite. Like you know, some like Sonoma Coke, like Sonoma wineries. Some of them might have it, but in Monterey County, the ATR is the only one with SIP certification. What is their distribution footprint by the way? Uh, so the question is uh Daytira's distribution. So Daytier has, I, if I remember right, it's 15 accounts <coughs> throughout most of the nation. They do a lot of high-end sales in places like New York, where there's a lot of uh, 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 a little more high, uh, higher income customers over there. Um, additional places where they offer their wine is casinos, and they just got into Whole Foods too recently. So they are beginning a national distribution program. Thank you. wine sales. That can be either wine club memberships or point of sale transactions. The reason why gross profit is listed as a higher number is because they get to sell off some of their barrels too after they're done using them. They normally sell several barrels every year, 
but after a three year cycle, that's when they start to select the most because those previous barrels, that previous vintage, have to either get recycled in some way, some way to make profit, because they won't be, you can't keep continuing reusing barrels because they won't in influence the flavor at all. So about every three years, you're gonna have a slight jump in, in gross profit, but it's not calculated in sales just because it's not wine. Okay, thank you. Very good. All right, thank you.